legacy of transparency, we are your trusted partner aiming for fully circular flooring solutions made with renewable and recycled raw materials. Going round, moving forward. Forbo Flooring Systems. Welcome and good afternoon. My name is Willem Romagne and I will be your host for this one hour session in which we are trying to solve the circular challenge. The presentations you will see will be available after the screening. Solving the circular challenge. How is that done? Let's first talk about the definition for what is the circular economy. What I have here is a paper from the CEN Technical Committee, Working Group 134. And there, as a definition for circular economy, it reads, a circular economy is an economic system aimed at maintaining the value of products, materials and resources for as long as possible by extracting the maximum value from them whilst in use, then recovering and regenerating um, products and materials at the end of each service life while minimizing the generation of waste. The circular economy is not having a cup and making it into a basket afterwards. That's okay, that is a start, but not for nothing. The circular economy is about going round, moving forward, which is exactly the theme of our new promotion campaign in, in Forbo, where we are promoting our use of the circular economy. What is the world today? What is happening in Europe? And what is in particular happening in, in various markets? I'm joined today by two people two key players in the industry when it comes to promoting circularity. They are Jane Gardner from AFMI, the European Resilient Floor Manufacturers Institute, and Julie Chaminade from Calais, who is doing exactly the same for the French market. Only, not only floor coverings, they also include ceilings, panels, walls, whatever. So big in France. Two very important people when it comes to explaining to us what the circular economy is all about and what we are doing about it actually and giving an example in this case in the French market which in many cases are a front runner when it comes to circularity in particular. I will start this presentation by asking Jane who now will share the screen with me from Brussels where our offices of Erfme, Forbo as you might know is a member of the European Resilient Flooring Manufacturers Institute. As a matter of fact, we're one of the founding members, uh, together with Tarket and Jair Floor and Polyfloor from the UK. Um, we're going strong for 25 years, and we have a clear vision on what the circular economy is all about. The floor is yours, Jane. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Willem. I'm going to start uh, uh, the presentation today by introducing you to the European Resilient Flooring Manufacturers Institute. I will explain who we are, what we do, and then I will have a look at the European policies that are um, shaping our actions and uh, describe our approach to the circular economy and some of the actions we are undertaking to develop a circular economy for resilient floor coverings. So we are the Euro European Trade Association for resilient floor, for the resilient floor covering sector. This covers PVC, rubber, linoleum, cork, as well as, as well as other polymeric floor covering. We have 17 members who together place more than 370 million square meters of flooring on the European market. Uh, every year. Uh, the sectors that are covered, the segments that are covered by our members are shown here. So we have hospitality and leisure, uh, healthcare, residential, transport, industry, uh, retail, uh, and business. Um, these are our members of whom Forbo is, of course, uh, a founding member and also a member uh, of our XCOM with Willem Bormania being the chair. So this is what we do. We have established a roadmap. There are four main areas. 
Um, first of all, is we are very involved in standardization to ensure that our uh, products meet the highest uh, possible standards. We uh, ensure technical and legal compliance of our members. We track uh, policies across Europe that will affect the flooring industry. We undertake advocacy towards the um, European um, Commission and European Parliament to ensure a, um, a landscape in Europe in which our members can continue to grow and develop. And uh, by far the most important uh, part of our remit is to look at how to develop a circular economy for floor covering. Um, and our actions are shaped very largely by European policy. And I just wanted to go in a few slides over the main policies that are shaping our action. So um, the European Green Deal was launched by Ursula von der Leyen in December 2019. It has two main goals. So by 2030, to reduce net greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% uh, compared to a 1990 baseline, and by 2050, to uh, achieve total carbon uh, neutrality, uh, whereby, and a circular economy, whereby, as Willem has already described, economic growth is decoupled from resource. And in order to do this, um, this is a slide that I ha has been compiled by Construction Products Europe. Um, they have developed policies, initiatives, and communications aplenty in the last um, uh, three years. Uh, and you can see um, that all of them are interlinked. So the ones that we are mainly focusing on uh, are Circular Economy Action Plan, the Sustainable Products Initiative, and the construction products regulations, but uh, they are um, interlinked and affected by nearly all the other um, policies, initiatives, and communications. Um, the, uh, so just to name a few, we have the revision of the construction products regulations, which uh, the regulations which um, specify uh, uh, how you um, how you are or define how uh, you are allowed to place construction products on the market uh, in Europe, um, and they are looking at introducing environmental aspects into CE marking. In particular, it will be mandatory to um, include um, greenhouse uh, information on greenhouse gas emissions and basically undertake life cycle assessments in order to place your product on the market in Europe. Uh, they have introduced an eco-design uh, for sustainable products regulations, the ESPR. This is the overarching regulation looking at um, eco-design and sustainability in products. And it will, for construction products, or it will be implemented within the construction products regulations. It's looking at, uh, then we are looking at many minimum recycled content initiatives. Um, the CE marking is foreseeing uh, uh, product passports to be developed. Uh, and uh, we are also a signatory of the EU Commission backed Circular Plastics Alliance. This is an alliance with over 240 signatories, both from industry and um, institutions and national uh, national and public authorities. And the target is to achieve 10 million tons of uh, recycled plastics used in new products placed on the market in Europe by 2025. Um, and then there are many national policies, uh, particularly looking at extended producer responsibility. Uh, the clear front runner here is France. And Julie uh, will explain in more detail about how this is being um, launched uh, in France. Um, so, developing a circular economy for resilient floor coverings. The first thing is that we, we have a, a, a clear 
vision of where we want to go. Uh, we want to uh, develop our industry or continue to develop it, uh, to contribute to the preservation of our planet, to develop circular products with a reduced environmental footprint. We are doing this by trialing collection schemes across Europe. We are undertaking trials and research on recycling technologies. Uh, we're taking the lead really on standardization within the, with regard to circular economy. Uh, we want to become leaders in the circular economy for floor coverings and beyond and be seen as a blueprint. And we want to, we are very aware that we have to engage with the entire supply chain across the life cycle of the flooring in order to achieve these goals. Um, so that's some of the practical steps we have undertaken. We have developed a, a dedicated circular economy working group within EarthMe. We have uh, we are developing standards for the circular economy uh, and we have investigated or we are investigating technology options for sorting of um, resilient flooring waste for extracting legacy materials and for recycling. Um, I will mention legacy materials a few times. So I should probably say that one of our main challenges when it comes to recycling post-consumer flooring is that our flooring uh, coverings are extremely resilient and long lasting, which is a, a positive for sustainability. However, this positive has a drawback that when the flooring is you know, 20 years old, um, 20 years ago, it, it was possibly probably used making chemicals that are using made made using chemicals that are no longer allowed to be used in new products placed on the market today. This is why we are spending a lot of uh, time and focusing on trying to sort legacy materials out of the waste stream and trying to extract legacy materials from post consumer floor coverings. Um, uh, standardization, it's really very, very important because it helps us to unify um, terminology and interfaces. It helps us provide better communication across the supply chain with different market actors. And it also helps us greatly um, in order to um, develop um, a, a common understanding not only in Europe, but also um, globally, especially if uh, we could roll these standards out, for example, within the International Standardization Organization, ISO. Um, so at the moment, the um, uh, CENTI C134 is working on terms and definitions. We're looking at guidelines for design for recycling. Uh, which is a very important topic. And we're looking at uh, developing a standard for product passports to understand what information needs to be placed in the product passport for it to be useful to the user of the flooring. So the technology options we are developing are first of all, um, co-funded by Vinyl Plus, the PVC industry commitment to sustainability. And uh, there we are looking at uh, uh, recycling technologies, as I've mentioned before, uh, but also collections. Uh, we are currently um, looking at uh, working on a collection scheme from a distributor in uh, Germany. Uh, and we are working with the Dutch um, Association for Flooring Contractors. Um, working with their members to collect resilient floor coverings from the uh, waste resilient floor coverings from the Dutch market. Um, I think it's very important because the way you collect material has a huge impact on the way it can be handled at end of life. And so we are very keen to try different ways of collecting flooring to assess what the optimal way is and it could very uh, easily vary by country in order to achieve, um, to recover the resources and uh, um, so that they can be used in a second line. We are working on EU funded Horizon 2020 project, circular uh, flooring. 
And as part of the European Floor Coverings Association, we are um, part of the CISAFLOW project, Circular uh, Sustainable Floor Coverings. I'll just, so we, all our members have internal reprocessing and recycling. They have zero waste factories. Um, uh, and Forbo is definitely one of the front runners here. They have collection programs for installation waste and for, uh, and some also for post consumer material. And there is a industry owned recycling production plant uh, in Germany, uh, which has been operating for over 20 years called AGPR. And in 2021, the industry collected uh, earth members recycled around 120,000 tons of uh, PVC floor covering. Um, but there's no doubt that we can be doing more, particularly when it comes to post consumer flooring. So we were very lucky to, uh, we're very happy to be part of a consortium working on a project called Circular Flooring Project. It is a um, four year project. Uh, it's managed by a German institute called the Fraunhofer uh, Institute. And um, the, it has a consortium of 11 members from across the flooring supply chain. And there are seven, um, we call them linked third parties, the seven members of uh, EarthMe who are going to trial the flooring recycled um, in uh, new products. And Forbo again is one of them. So the idea here is to take uh, PVC floor coverings um, to separate the legacy materials, which are in this case mainly plasticizers, from the pure PVC uh, using a dissolution process called ClearSol. The PVC will then be used uh, in new flooring production. And the resid, so the uh, plasticizers that have been extracted, uh, are being um, um, turned into reach compliant plasticizers via a chemical process of hydrogenation. And um, the idea is that we will then be able to replasticize the PVC um, with this newly developed plasticizer and use it in new flooring. It's quite a complicated slide, but you will be able to use this, uh, see the slide. Um, you uh, will have the slide pack available. Uh, and then we are part of CISAFLOW, which is completely overarching, looking at all floor coverings, so carpet, laminate, multi-layer floor coverings, and resilient floor coverings. And the idea is to set up a systemic framework for circular and sustainable floor coverings to minimize the total environmental impact of the entire flooring sector and to shift from a linear to a circular model. There are 19 members of this uh, party across all across Europe. And uh, you can see that EUFCA is, is one of them. And um, the, the idea is that we are looking at um, taking a holistic approach, looking at the circularity of floor coverings. We're also looking at how to uh, identify uh, what is in uh, the floor coverings at end of life. So here it's going further than developing uh, what has to go into a product passport, but it's actually looking at how to attach the information to the actual product. There are um, six pilot schemes. We are looking at uh, identification of flooring waste, manufacturing of circular flooring products, and also separating um, different layers of, of, of flooring. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail here because you, you will see the slide, uh, but the idea is to look at a holistic approach for the entire flooring sector. So just to conclude, um, EarthMe and its members, we're taking a strategic approach to the development of the circular economy. Very important for our industry. Um, and we, uh, our aim is to uh, be one of the leaders um, in the circular economy and the leader in the circular economy in the flooring sector. We recognize that we need to collaborate with other actors in the supply chain in order to achieve this. So we are uh, 
looking to work with waste management companies, recyclers and raw material suppliers, and just to work together to become uh, more circular. So um, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. And please see my email address um, on this slide if you would like any further uh, information. Thank you very much for giving this very clear insight, a very comprehensive presentation of everything that is happening on a European scale. I was struck by, by one thing on one of your slides which concerns the EU Green Deal. It's not a question, but it's something that I thought, ah, I didn't realize this, but it, it is actually true. You said that Ursula von der Leyen said, the circular, circular economy economic growth is decoupled from resource. That's of course very interesting, that you do not need to require new resources, new raw material in order to grow. That if you apply the uh, rules of the circular economy, you will retrieve your raw material and you will be able to grow, partly of course, because there will be some waste and you will need some new material, but you will be able to grow by using, reusing your original raw materials. That I thought was a great insight. Now, my question is, uh, can you give an example or can you, can you say something about uh, for instance, the circular flooring project. How far are we? Because I can imagine people are thinking, yes, this is a big European organization. They get money from Europe. They will have consultants, no doubt. They will talk and talk and have papers and have good ideas. But what, what actually has been done in the circular flooring project until now? So we're very practical. Um, we have so far um, uh, Actually, uh, they have already trialed the uh, dissolution of the um, uh, PVC from the uh, 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 legacy materials, which has been very successful. And they are currently in the process of building a pilot plant in order to process um, several tons of flooring, which will then be sent to the manufacturers who will have a look at uh, how it could be incorporated in their recipes or in their in their products, or even whether a new product could be designed with, in which this floor, uh, flooring could be used. Um, so the pilot plant is currently being built, and we hope that it will be finished by the end of the year. Uh, and then we will uh, start trials in um, large scale trials in January. Uh, we have been held up slightly building the pilot plant due to COVID, but uh, uh, it's definitely progressing very well and um, you know, it has a lot of promise in that way. Yeah. I know that we have developed this process together with the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany, as well as the University of Athens. And circular flooring in the end will give us, well, a little bit simplified. It, it will take all floor covering to go in and it will give us pure PVC, pure plasticizer, filler, and legacy materials. We don't want those, the others we can use. Yes. Okay, well, In good. a nutshell. <laughs> Excellent, thank you very much. Good, let's, um, let's dive into the topic a little bit deeper now. I would like to introduce our second guest, which is Julie Chaminat, who is the Managing Director of Calais. I now also know that how to pronounce Calais. In the, in the industry, we talk about Calais, 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 Calais it is. Um, founded over 100 years ago, Julie will talk about that. What is interesting about um, the um, example that we have in France, that there we have the Green Deal, which in effect will become legislation for all of us. All of our governments will implement laws. One is quicker, one is more specific, one is more general, one focus on one topic, one on the other. In France, they've taken a very much a holistic approach taking the extended producer's responsibility, the producer being responsible for the product in its conception right through the end. And there France has taken a huge step. And Julie is going to talk to us to explain us what is, what is happening in France today. So uh, let's talk about Calais in a few words. Um, we are, as you said before, um, an association representing many more markets than the flooring coverings, uh, wall coverings, panels, stretched ceilings, architectural textiles, roofing membranes, everything related with uh, um, soft PVC, I would say. We were funded uh, 100 years ago and represent European manufacturers active on the French market. 
just to give an idea of what the market for flooring is in France, it's over 60 million square meters per year. Over 20 members, um, of which FOBO is a funding members and uh, active for a very long time and also member of our executive committee as it is in uh, EFME. So what about the circular economy in France uh, and why um, talking about uh, France uh, at this point? Because I really believe that France is a champion in Europe in this matter. Um, it was the very first one to publish uh, a law which is uh, called AGEC and which title um, uh, already mentioned the circular economy as an objective. It was published uh, two years ago now in February two 2020 and covers more than 100 articles, uh, which led to uh, exactly uh, around the same number of decrees, some of them even uh, to be implemented few months after. The whole philosophy behind this law is to say that circular economy is a global responsibility uh, for manufacturers, of course, but also for end users and at every step along the production process, but also along the value chain for all markets and all types of products. Now, if we look um, and dip into this law and look at the major objectives, uh, impacting the flooring covering industry, there are six uh, I could uh, pick. Uh, one is uh, to fight against product wastage. A second one is to reduce and recycle waste from the building sector. A third one is to promote circular economy via public demand. A fourth one is to enable the consumer to make an informed decision. The fifth one is to reduce the use of plastic single-use packaging. And the sixth one is produce responsibility. And somehow all of these have something to do with circularity and prevention of waste. If we look at the concrete uh, requirements uh, that we can find in different decrees related to these objectives, um, I um, listed them from their application date. Um, since two years, uh, it's compulsory in France waste sorting. Uh, at building demolition and industry level. There is also a second decree, which is very interesting, even though it's not yet um, something real for construction products, but it's a minimum percentage of public purchases, purchases to be done with articles uh, presenting recycled content or possibility of being reused. In some of the categories mentioned in this decree, it goes to 40% uh, of the purchases, for instance. Um, let's say it's uh, more for furniture, clothing, paper, and this kind of uh, product at the moment. Um, in 2022, um, became compulsory waste audits prior to renovation and demolition. This will help circularity because you know where waste is and uh, uh, what need to be done. Next January, three major uh, tools will come into force. One I will just um, uh, detail a bit more uh, further later on, the European Product uh, Responsibility Scheme for Construction Products. But I wanted to mention as well two other um, um, tools, labeling on endoscreen disruptors will be compulsory as well as labeling on environmental impacts. This kind of information can also have some uh, impacts um, on recyclability uh, and of course, therefore uh, circularity. And in two years time, we are expecting uh, two more important decrees to enter into force, uh, a European product responsibility scheme for industrial and commercial packaging and for every industrial there is use of packaging to uh, uh, protect their products and uh, allow transport. So every industrial will have to pay this uh, new tax. And there is also um, a request, a requirement to reduce for every industrial the use uh, of um, single use packaging by 20 compared to um, 2018. Uh, with the aim that in uh, 2040, 
there shall no be any more uh, single-use packaging in France, whatever sector. Now, if we come to uh, the uh, French Extended Producer Responsibility Scheme for construction product as such, which uh, is of course uh, something um, that the flooring industry uh, is facing at the moment. Who is concerned and what is the philosophy? Really the idea here is to say, if you produce an article which will generate waste, then you have to pay for uh, the management of this waste. But of course, uh, we can ask ourselves, uh, who are the producers then? Only in the manufacturers? No. In the French law, it is really clear that when you are a manufacturer with the French legal entity, yes, you need to pay. But if you are a distributor with your own brands, you are also concerned and have to pay your duty. And if you import directly from abroad, uh, well, then you distributor, installer or building owners have to pay also uh, your duty to, um, to this uh, EPR scheme. If the manufacturers selling from abroad want to uh, pay instead of their customers, they will have the possibility to do it, but it's on a voluntary basis. The list of concerned products uh, has been uh, detailed by the state because it's not that easy. Sometimes you have uh, some products uh, sold in different markets. Three eco-organisms or um, product responsibility organisms um, will be dealing with the flooring products waste. Uh, they have been accredited within the last two weeks uh, by the French state, and their name are Valobat, Valdelia, and Ecomobilier, which turned to be now Ecomaison. Interestingly, the very first one, Valobat, uh, has been created from scratch and only for this uh, EPR scheme, dealing with construction products, and uh, its funding members are industrial, among which uh, Fobo, committed to uh, 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 give a reality to this uh, EPR scheme. The two other ones, Valdelia and Ecomobilier, were eco-organisms already ex existing for the furniture uh, take back, uh, which decided to um, open and enlarge their business to the construction product. These three eco-organisms um, will uh, or have uh, to publish tariffs, each of them, uh, they choose the tariffs they want to apply. Um, the idea is most of the time that the amount to pay by the producer will depend on, on its uh, annual turnover. And these tariffs will be updated each year because uh, these organizations are non-profit organizations and they establish the tariffs based on the cost of collection, recycling and volumes um, they have. Another idea which is very interesting in this uh, French le legislation is uh, the bonus malus system. It's the way to uh, incitate the industry to put on the market the best product uh, for circularity, i.e., um, for instance, with uh, non or um, the least dangerous substances uh, possible. Uh, with the highest level of renewable resources. So it's, these are two parameters that will be taken into account uh, since um, um, next year. And in a year time, um, more parameters will be taken into consideration, recyclability, reuse and recycle content. How will it work? Uh, there will be collection points all over France. Every 20 kilometers uh, and sometimes 10 kilometers, you will find a collection point from one of the three net networks, uh, Valdelia, Valobat, or uh, Ecomaison we mentioned before. On every of these collection point, uh, the law says uh, uh, seven containers for construction products will need to be available for installers and one for plastics. And when I say one for plastics, it's all plastics mixed. So there, uh, there is uh, currently negotiation from our association with uh, some of the 
PRO um, eco-organisms so that we have uh, specific containers for PVC fluorine waste because as I said, uh, was said by Jane, it's very important to have the best sorting at the a very early stage. When installers will come to these collection points, it will be free of charge. And these collection points will be whether run by professional waste management companies or by um, uh, public authorities. Another idea is that collection will be possible also at construction site for large volumes. Um, it will start a year after because it's really a lot of work to put in place all these networks. And also with the idea that it will be uh, less expensive for installers than it is today. The legislator wanted also to um, implement another uh, option, i.e. that distributors could become collection points. And this is an obligation when they have premises over 4,000 square meters to take free of charge uh, waste uh, from their customers or anyone coming back with waste corresponding to the product they sell. Of course, uh, they have this uh, possibility not to have the seven containers, but only the one corresponding to the product they sell. So as you see in, in resume, the idea of the French uh, EPR scheme is really to uh, put in place a, a large scale management of waste and not to have pilot schemes here and there, one parallel to the other. Uh, to organize the waste collection, but also partnerships with cyclers. I didn't deep into that because we don't really have time, but uh, that's the idea. And the ambition in France is to deal with 40 million tons of building and construction waste. It means that they expect to uh, collect via um, uh, what the uh, producers will pay 2.5 milliard euros only for the collection and recycling of construction waste. It's the highest uh, EPR scheme in France ever, and even three times higher than the one for uh, packaging, which is uh, from ever the most important in France. So um, we could ask ourselves, well, what, uh, now that we know the legislation, what uh, else can be done? The to solve the challenge of circularity and prevention of waste. I think uh, what is doing FME at the moment is really, really what is to be done. Um, we need absolutely to develop adequate sorting equipment to help the sorting of mixed uh, plastic containers and also to um, develop uh, large scale dedicating recycling plants because um, of course, the amount of uh, waste that is going to be collected uh, will become higher and higher because free of charge installers will have the opportunity to uh, to do something about it and feel uh, uh, committed. The ambition uh, we share with EFME is flooring back to flooring. Integrating recycling requirements into product design and installation is uh, something that uh, the manufacturers are doing and Forbo is doing very well and really helps circularity. Uh, we do promote uh, this idea. It's also important to uh, think about new, new steps and new field of legislation that are coming. Uh, at least in France, there is a lot of work on uh, building modularity and reuse of products, which can also be uh, a way of answering uh, circularity. A move to digitalization is also something um, that is important at the um, level of uh, the industry and also the associations. Implement circularity. Every yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, and just say facilitate education on circularity along the chain. Very important. Now, uh, internet developments influence France. Yes, all goals are common. We could see from the first slide of uh, Jane. 
limit climate change impacts, circularity. Speed and tools might be slightly different, but at the end, it's the European legislation that will be imposed in France. But we hope that with the success of our tools, we will give the right direction to uh, what uh, Europe will do. And thank you, EFMI, for what you do. Thank you, uh, FOBO, and um, for what you're doing as well, because I think really the flooring industry is on the way to circularity. This is a very impressive presentation of what is actually happening in France today. I believe if I see all the slides and all the things that have been organized, there's been an enormous amount of work in preparing this and getting this done. It's a huge geographical country. I believe it is the largest geographical country in Europe. And then to have collection points every 20, sometimes every 10 kilometers, I think is a great achievement. Um, you said something about the tariffs. Um, the eco-organisms, which are the three parties who are organizing everything, they, they of course require money. That is what you call the tariff, isn't it? Mm, exactly. Have they been announced yet? Well, that's a good question because they have been announced today. So, ah. a very uh, bravo for the very date good. of your ah, so even webinar. There you are on well, schedule. It's really, mm -hmm. very well done. Really on the schedule. Uh, it has been announced today, and uh, okay. uh, the three eco organisms are really on the same trend. Uh, they speak about um, 0 0.02 or three uh, cents per ton. So, of course, you have to uh, okay. transform that into uh, square meters when you talk mm -hmm. about um, uh, flooring. But if you take uh, a floor covering, which is uh, two and a half kilos, which is uh, or mm -hmm. three kilos, which is uh, average, yes, uh, average, mm -hmm. uh, it means 10, 10 cents. Well, the, 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 that is that is quite a lot. I, I would not say better than expected, but. It, it, it is certainly helping the scheme. It is not a major contribution that you have to make per square meter as a manufacturer. So I think that that's... that's I would say hmm? that, that's a start because as, okay. as I said before, uh, these organizations hmm. are non-profit organizations. Mm -hmm. They look at the balance in between the volume they think they will collect and the recycling cost. Because okay. we are mm -hmm. at the start, they believe they will start with, they don't give the, the exact indication, but mm -hmm. they believe they will start with little. Yes. Uh, and by and time, education of the installers yeah. will be higher mm -hmm. and they will bring more. Volumes will be higher. Um, and therefore, uh, maybe the um, tariff will will increase but that's okay. that's a start it's already a lot of education to uh, customers to explain about this uh, uh, new um, new information mm -hmm. and new yeah. uh, price and then if you uh, if you are using more eco-friendly floor covering material then you have a bonus so exactly. th th there is there is this bonus malus system as well which i like very mm. much Let's have uh, Jane in the picture as well and answer some questions from the audience. I would like to start with one still question from you, um, uh, Julie. You said in your presentation a couple of times, the law says blah, blah, blah. So how important is the role of the French legislation, the French government in this scheme? They impose everything. They, 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 they believe yes. they, they impose uh, the tools. They believe there is an objective, but they believe they have also uh, the solution. And France is really a champion in EPR schemes. Mm -hmm. We are uh, in this Ajac law I mentioned. There are eleven schemes to yeah. be developed, mm -hmm. and from the history, we have thirty EPR schemes. So French, uh, the French state is a real believer. Uh, on the uh, success, a uh, large-scale okay. management of waste okay. paid by the producer of the products mm -hmm. uh, can be. Do you, Jane, do you believe that um, in other countries in Europe a similar process will occur, that the Green Deal will become legislation? I, I, I do believe that uh, it will occur. There have been discussions in other countries um, 
uh, I think it's uh, France is the only one that has really implemented it first, but I think we can look to France as to how, how it's done and, and, and learn from them. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, I think it, um, it will come in other countries. I know that in the Netherlands, they're talking about, they're looking specifically at flooring in, um, and um, it, there's talk of it in Germany and um, all over Europe as well. Yeah. It's interesting, I was also going to make that remark between, let's say, what's happening in the Netherlands and in France. And what I see happening in the Netherlands is what is lacking is this government urge and this government legislative power that they can have to say, simply say, guys, you have to make it happen because otherwise you're going to pay. We have great schemes, but we have a government that's running a little bit behind. I'm talking about uh, my own country here. Um, there, there is a question from the audience because the audience is free to use the chat and I will see your questions and then I will pose them to either Jane or Julie, whoever is most fit to, to answer the question. Um, Mr. Uh, Steve Stein um, is, is saying, given, that's for you Jane, given the wide use of AirFME member products in the US, uh, and that's also true for Australia for instance, does AirFME interact with our counterparts in the US and Australia? Yes, indeed. It's very interesting you should say that, but we have set up a, a small forum between the three managing directors. We, we uh, have met uh, twice so far. We're meeting on a six-weekly basis to exchange on the work we're doing with RFCI and Arthur the, uh, in America and Arthur in Australia. Um, in Australia, they are looking at uh, voluntary this responsibility, but um, they have been given uh, a million uh, Australian dollars uh, and 12 months to set up or to plan uh, a voluntary producer res uh, responsibility take back scheme. And if that doesn't work, then it will be imposed upon. So in Australia, they've got a slightly different model. And in America, I don't think um, the government is discussing uh, producer responsibility yet. Um, but no, we are in touch and because we realize it's a global, uh, a global market. And all our members sell globally, so we realize it's very important to speak um, to yeah. the other parts yeah, of the I think world. in particular the Australian example is very interesting because here in Europe um, we have sort of a natural reaction. Um, can we not send it, send it back to the factory? Can they not yeah. deal with it? And of course if you are in Australia and you're dealing with products that are manufactured in Europe, sending it back to the factory is not really feasible. I mean, mm. the distance, um, the amount of product, uh, so you would have to think of a local solution, which I think is interesting. Now, yeah. one of the um, European countries that is a little bit further than, than other markets um, is Italy. Um, when it comes to defining the amount of recycled content in floor covering product that is used in public buildings. There should be a certain amount of recycled content. I do not know exactly if it is 15 or 20 percent, but something like that. For Julie, is there is there something like that in France as well, that the government imposes a level of recycled content? No, uh, no? no, not yet, not, not yet. yet. Um, as, no, not yet. But mm -hmm. uh, it impose um, in the legislation which refers to the information to begin given on environmental impacts, it will impose for a long list of categories to mention the recycle content on every article. It's not yet uh, to be implemented for, by construction product, mm -hmm. probably in two or three or five years uh, from now. But for packaging, furniture, and many other sectors, there is this obligation to uh, mention always a recycled content. Okay, so, so there are the lot, there. a lot of discussion going uh -huh. on on what uh, recycle content mean. Ah, yes, yes. Because Just like the definition we had at the beginning. Sector. Yeah. Just like we were discussing at the beginning what the circular economy actually is. Also recycled content you can talk about. Is it clean waste that you are retrieving when you install a floor? Is it like Jane was talking about uh, old uh, post-consumer floors that have been laying there for th 30 years or more that you need to take back and you don't know what is exactly in it, you don't know who the producer is. So a very complicated discussion. Um, when it comes to PVC recycling, Jane, would you consider, let's say, the dissolution project? Um, 
circular flooring, CC flow, as, as upcycling of PVC. There's this idea about upcycling, downcycling, and then we'll degrade, degrade, degrade. But this dissolution project, would that be a form of upcycling? No, definitely, because you are basically using PVC back into the product, not quite in its raw form, because it, it would still contain some filler material. Uh, but yes, because you can use it back into flooring, it would definitely be upcycling as such. Yeah, because that also is interesting for, uh, for the situation in France we have today. Um, uh, Julie, we have this scheme whereby the manufacturers we know now are going to pay uh, anything between, let's say, 10 and 20 cents to, per square meter for their floor covering. Um, so that's up to us to actually do that as a manufacturer. But um, wh when, when the waste is being recycled, will, will there be a value at the end that the waste can be sold to somebody and that, that a manufacturer can get something back for his waste? Well, uh, it will become usual business uh, mm -hmm. in between the recycler and the yes. industrial. Uh, ah. But of course it has a value because uh, uh, the more the industrial will uh, put re recycle content uh, high in its product, mm -hmm. the best uh, reduction of its uh, eco contribution it will get. So of yeah. course there will there will be a need an absolutely need to have some uh, um, recycled uh, material available uh, for the flooring industry. Of course, so all the work which is done at the moment by uh, Ermi is of uh, absolutely uh, high value and need to be. Uh, speed up as much as uh, mm -hmm. it is possible. Yes, I, I, I hope that everybody who is listening from within countries in Europe actually are uh, quite excited about seeing what has happened in France and what has been organized. And also that you find some answers as to what you should be doing, what you should be looking at, how you should organize such a scheme. Companies like Valabat are of course crucial to this whole scheme, I can imagine, Julie. They are. Uh, this one very specifically because it is um, composed by uh, the industry itself. Mm -hmm. So it has all the knowledge of the products, of all the needs, and, and having collection schemes okay. without looking at uh, the recycling um, option and what are the needs of the industry at the end of the way to make, make it circular. Uh, is uh, nonsense. So that's the mm -hmm. value of Alubat to get this expertise from uh, its funded members. And there you also said the members are working together. Jane, do you also see that as a next step within the European organizations that um, if you want to make this happen, there, there should be a collaboration with someone like Valobat, a third party, but also between companies? Uh, one hundred percent. I believe that either it has to be done by a third party, uh, and then backed by manufacturers, um, as it is the case in Valobat, Although that's obviously legally binding, but that's one the uh, one way to operate. Or uh, there has to be some kind of joint uh, cooperate, uh, some kind of cooperation um, to make this to make this happen. Um, but it wouldn't be a first in our industry. It's been done in the past, and so. I'm hopeful that uh, we might be able to set something similar up for the flooring industry. I, I can mm -hmm. add here yes. that uh, within Valobat and the other eco-organisms, there are some funds for research and uh, development projects. Mm -hmm. So it's the perfect idea to uh, combine the efforts made by ERMI and the uh, industry uh, with the uh, objectives of the um, uh, eco-organisms in mm -hmm. France to mm -hmm. come to solutions <clears throat> adequate for our sector. And just to be clear, to, for, for, for both of you, we are talking about, um, in, in, in the case of AIRFME, resilient floor covering. So that, that mm -hmm. includes PVC, where we talk a lot about, of course, but there, there, there's also rubber and there is um, linoleum, there is uh, uh, non-PVC flooring. Uh, there, there's cork flooring, which all belong to our category. 
Um, we, we all take that as, as one group of products. Is that true, Jane? That's what we're looking at in our collection scheme in, yeah. in the Netherlands. And, mm -hmm. and we will look at how we can sort that, um, if possible, uh, um, uh, um, uh, automatically uh, yeah. into the different categories. Yeah, because interesting enough, of course, that's also for the audience, you might be thinking that collection schemes are difficult to set up. But if you look at what has happened in, let's say, the car industry with all the electric batteries, they have set up a scheme where it doesn't really matter whether you recycle a battery out of a Mercedes or out of a Tesla or out of a BMW or a Volkswagen or a Peugeot. They're all collected as batteries and treated as batteries or even closer to home, your fridge, your washing machine, whenever you want to have a new one, a new television. They are not saying, I only take Bosch washing machines or I only take Miele washing machines. I don't want the Bosch. Everything that you hand in is being treated um, without being the different of the, the brand that is involved. And that also for me, as I see it, is the future within the um, flooring industry. Julie, as, as, a, as a final remark, I have, I have a short story we talked about a little bit um, before we started the webinar. I was in France in the weekend, in, um, in the Morvan, helping friends with cutting down some trees around a little house that they have had for 20 years. And we were talking about this webinar, because I said I had to go back on Monday and to be here. We were talking about this webinar, and then uh, my, my friend said, yeah, it, it, it's actually funny, because 20 years ago, there was a dump here in the woods, and I could mm. just put my, could my litter, and all kinds of litter, building material and stuff like that. I, I, I just could put it on that dump, but there was a dump for the whole village. Now, that is, that is no longer there. I'm, I'm now driving, indeed, 10 kilometers to a formal déchetterie. <coughs> so a formal place where, where I need to register what I dump or what I give back, and then it's being treated. So it's actually happening. <coughs> It's, it's exactly one of the <coughs> political reasons why uh, the French government went so fast on uh, putting the EPR schemes for every type of product. As I, as I said before, 30 EPR schemes in France. It covers everything. Everything. I could give you examples, but it's uh, very impressive. <laughs> A cold during that um, clothes, during furniture, batteries, <coughs> leisure sport, packaging. Good. So many. We're there. Thank you very much, <coughs> both of you. Now my voice goes all of a sudden. Bye bye. It's been a pleasure.